Ends of Barrier Islands are notoriously bad places for development. This is an aerial of the sandy spit at the end of Pauley's Island up the coast ways. When a Category 3 hurricane hit several miles to the south of this spit, it was about the same width as Captain Sam's spit is today at the narrowest point. The dunes are not as high as those on Captain Sam's spit when the 11-foot storm surge from Hurricane Hugo rolled over this spit. Look at the um, area with the X on the spit and you can see what happened at Hurricane Hugo. This major breach and road repairs were done along with er other emergency repairs using federal funds. So I can't tell you exactly how much it costs to repair a major blowout in a spit. The Corps of Engineers did have a lot of trouble though. They began pushing sand into it and it just washed right out. They had to come 80 miles to the south and get big concrete chunks of rubble from a, the Citadel football stadium um, demolition to plug the gap in the hole before they could get it stabilized enough to fill it in with sand. There was a lot of discussion um, at the bulkhead appeal and during the depositions over how big a hurricane it would take to breach the spit, but it's not the size of the hurricane so much as when it hits and how much of a storm surge it's pushing. So it's strictly wind speed isn't a good indicator of whether the spit would be breached or not. Um, ends of barrier islands like this um, northern end of Isle of Palms is another example of why it's bad to build on in, in these hazardous locations. You can tell from this picture that this beach is completely covered with sandbags in an effort to try to prevent erosion in this area. They stretch all the way around here um, in this area. These sandbags were preventing the public from enjoying the beach, the dry sandy beach, um, to tr in an effort to protect structures that were built too close to the water's edge at the end of an island. Um, last year, $10 million was spent pumping sand here, $3 million of it in public funds. But before that, the own property owners at Wild Dunes spent a fortune bringing in sand and then sandbags. It was a highly publicized three to four year battle against the forces of nature, and homes were not selling well. When this sort of thing gets in the news, it can damage property values. When it happens over and over again, people become leery of buying there, and Kiowa has an excellent reputation as a sustainable, stable place to, de to retire and to invest. It has, um, it has really held its value well, even in the um, downturn of current real estate markets. When trucks of sand and beach scraping didn't work, at um, Isle of Palms, they armored the shore with, with, um, with the sandbags, and that, those created a lot of problems also. This is just another photograph in an area where people built out on a narrow sandy spit, and the washover from storms have, has damaged houses and caused a lot of bad publicity. Pictures like this on the national news certainly don't help property values anywhere, anywhere nearby. Um, this is just an example of, of a home um, damaged from a hurricane built in a sandy area too close to the ocean. Kiowa's really a avoided these kinds of images on the news because of their sound development practices and because you've been a little bit lucky and haven't had a direct hit from a hurricane. But the um, way the island was planned and developed has really prevented this sort of thing. The, um, reasons that we're particularly concerned about this area also are because it is critical habitat for piping plovers, a threatened species in this area. Diamondback terrapins also use this, the, the very bend in the spit where the bulkheads are being proposed as prime nesting area for these diamondback terrapins. They're a marsh turtle that's a species in serious decline in South Carolina and in the Kiowa River. But people love it too. It's a great place for people to pull their kayaks up on, to walk along, to fish, to just enjoy watching the porpoises who enjoy strand feeding here. It's an important public resource and those are the reasons that we're particularly concerned about it because the beaches like this, whether they're on the front side or the back side of a, of a sea island, are public trust areas to be used and enjoyed by the public. It's certainly a beautiful area enjoyed by many people, and the Conservation League is working to prevent inappropriate development that would put more people in harm's way and damage the important wildlife resources and natural resources of Captain Sam Spit.